It has been a while since we've done an egg move run. I have a few of these events slash egg move runs on the channel and this one has been something I've been thinking about for a while because Executor is actually one of my personal favorite Pokemon. Overall, Executor is a Pokemon with monster stats, especially in special, that's held back for over half of the game by only having Barrage and it being a stone evolution means that it's likely the best candidate we've ever seen for this type of run. Now a quick reminder, let's go over what an egg move run is. I use the Bulbapedia transfer from another generation section of the generation one learn set pages and today we'll be taking a look at execute and executors page since we'll be evolving early with a thunderstone if we were legitimately doing this. Now also I've been playing a good bit of generation two and I now can have visual representation of how it would actually work so let's kind of quickly go over it. First up, we need to get Mega Drain. Now it's funny that the grass type Execute doesn't actually learn this move in Generation 1. It is what it is. Executor does learn it, but that's neither here nor there. I will be using it for an egg move. Now I found it easiest just to get a Sunkern since it knows this move at level 10, and then you breed it, and then your subsequent Execute hatches will have this move. Now from that point, you need to get both a male and female Execute with a Mega Drain and pass it on further, and after that it's just kind of a matter of level leveling up the parents to get some of those level up moves. The main move that's going to be helpful for this run is Confusion. Execute learns it naturally at level 19 in generation 2. And the second upgrade will be Sleep Powder. That's a huge upgrade over Hypnosis, but you don't actually learn it till level 37. Now when you get all three of these moves on the parents, all of your little level 5 eggy boys will have those moves passed on to them. From there, you just get a Leaf Stone. There's a couple of methods to do this in generation 2, but it doesn't really matter and when you evolve your execute with the egg moves you can go purchase the TM for headbutt and this is the Pokemon that we'll be using for today's run now hopefully I didn't over explain it and you guys are kind of following along but something funny actually happened to me when I was capturing this footage I actually got a shiny smoochum from the free daycare egg now I know that this has increased chances of being shiny but it's pretty cool and I'm actually gonna keep this save file and before we begin likes and comments really help YouTube know to recommend this video to like-minded individuals so if you enjoy solo runs and you want to see somebody else maybe another channel make it whether you're someone new or a returning subscriber that just wants to help out like Nyquil Dreamer scroll down and I want you to answer me this question would you guys be interested in an Alolan executor run if I made the custom ROM and overall do you guys think regional variants of generation one runs would be interesting to watch think about Galarian Zapdos or something like that and all the Alolan Pokemon. I'm just kind of curious, but with that out of the way, I think it's time to sit back, relax, grab yourself a Sodi Pop, and let's see if we can get some redemption with our Eggy Boy today. Now the huge thing here, the vanilla run, we had to use Barrage for half of the game. Now, with the egg moves, we can use Mega Drain and Confusion. That means right from the start of the game, we have access to that big, beautiful, special stat. And that means that this run's gonna be much better based off of that alone. Now, let me just go ahead and say up front with Executor, it's been a little bit since I've done this run. Now my overall rule set and all that kind of stuff has not changed since August when we did that run. But I will say that things are a little bit different Different. my process is a little bit different and I will say that I didn't understand how bad Executor's speed was and how much of a challenge that plus the slow leveling group actually presented with a run so this one was a little bit more challenging than maybe I first thought it would be now obviously we're not really gonna have any problems at the start but there is some things that we need to do it's not just cut and dry go to Brock but I will say that we did not we use the gen 2 patch the first time so this back sprite is a little bit new to me it's it's awful now let's zoom in on this and I want you to tell me what you think that this back sprite is doing and to me tell me that this back sprite doesn't look like it's going Duh -huh. that's exactly what it looks like to me now as for the start of the game you don't have to do extra battles but let me just talk about something I seen when I was looking at damage ranges if you battle the second bug catcher you can one shot all of his Pokemon with confusion and that means when you make it to Brock you can actually just one shot things with Mega Drain 
Train. If you didn't fight this second bug catcher, all of Brock's Pokemon would be a two shot, meaning that you'd have to take double the turns. So overall, it kind of balances out and it takes the same amount of time, but it just gives you a little bit of help being in that slow leveling group. Now we've already talked about Brock and that's the huge difference in these runs. In the original run with Barrage, we really squeaked through things earlier than we should have at level 13. Level 13 doesn't seem like it's that much, but being the slow leveling group, it took quite some time and we were at about 50 minutes when we beat Brock and we had about four resets to boot. So this start right here, it goes without saying, it's already much improved. Even if the rest of the entire run went exactly the same as the other one, we would still be saving like 40 minutes. Now today we will not be on the minimum path. There are a couple of extra battles I'm gonna pick up in and before Mount Moon. The first thing is this extra bug catcher here. Normally you would just fight the last. It's a little bit quicker. You'd fight her two Pokemon, backtrack, and reset her position, and then go on. But here with Confusion, we can just easily one-shot all these bugs, and it's a decent amount of experience. Outside of that, I do fight the Super Nerd. I fight the Double Grass last, and I will say that I made a mistake. I probably should have added in the Hiker with the Onyx and the Geodude. Since I have Mega Drain, it would have been much easier, but I normally never really think about that trainer. But overall, I don't think it would have a huge impact on the run. I just thought I'd mention it while I'm editing the footage. From there, we are just getting to Cerulean City as fast as we can, and we can just instantly take on Misty. We have a great top matchup here, and with Mega Drain, that means we can just easily tank whatever Misty's gonna throw at us and get a very easy victory. And doing Misty here first, being in the slow leveling group, it means we get some very valuable levels when we look ahead at Ravel number two. And when I was originally constructing this run, this fight wasn't that great. Now, when I was initially looking at everything, I was trying to get up to level 18. Maybe I was seeing if I could squeak out even more than that. I was entertaining the idea of using an early rare candy, but then I just forgot that as an egg move Pokemon, instead of using hypnosis, we're using sleep powder. Now, 75% accuracy on the sleep powder doesn't seem like it's great, but it's miles ahead of hypnosis like we really relied on in the first run with its 60% accuracy. And I was gonna say that most people may not think 15% is a lot, but I think you'd have to be pretty stupid not to realize that 15% increase is a pretty significant boost. But anyway, we just put it to sleep, and then with our superior moves with confusion, we can just beat it down. Now after it falls, the rest of the fight, there's not really anything worth mentioning. If you were to lose some health, you can get just a little bit back since we do have Mega Drain, and that's what I do here in the footage. Now overall, this wasn't that bad of a fight. I kind of overthought it initially, because when I was thinking of this as an egg move run, I was thinking of the raw power utilizing that special, rather than how good Sleep Powder is. But we won't have to rely on Sleep Powder a ton today, so if you're worried about that, just stop it. From there, the combination of having a Psychic move and a Grass move gives us some really good coverage. They actually cover each other really well, so we don't have any problems on Nugget Bridge, and from there, I think we can skip all the way down to the SSN. Just like with the first run, we will not be learning Body Slam today. All I do here is get the Rare Candy guarded by the Gentleman, and I guess I can briefly talk about Headbutt. Now, we're not gonna use it this much in the run. It's useful against some other Psychic types and things like that. It's a pretty respectable move, 70 base power. It's kind of the Gen 2 Body Slam. It's not as good, but it does have a chance to flinch, and it's not bad, and although we don't utilize it a ton, it's still just helpful to have in the move set. And I thought I'd bring that up because I haven't really talked about the rest of the moves that much. Especially since we're going to be relying on our special moves, our stab moves that are just overall stronger. But after that, we can take a look at rival number three. And just like on the first rival fight, I do want to put Pidgeotto to sleep because it's just kind of a menace. If you get hit with a sand attack, who knows what can happen. 75% accurate on the sleep powder means that I just want to utilize it in spots that are kind of problematic, especially since we're slow and we, we hit pretty hard, but we don't have any high tier damaging moves just yet. Confusion is pretty good with stab 75 effective power is pretty good, but it's no psychic and you just want to be more safe than sorry at these early stages in the game. Now, just like last time, once you take out the Pidgeotto, once you avoid that sand attack, I mean, you can really just do what you want. I just spam confusion. It's pretty good. When you get to the Kadabra, you do want to spam headbutt. And I guess if you really needed to, you could hit 
deal with Mega Drain at some point, but I don't need to. And we take the fight. And now we can just keep moving on to Lieutenant Surge. And this fight is the epitome of easy. I don't have any trouble here. It's very easy. And if I needed to, just like I've been saying a few times already, I could Mega Drain to get some health back. But the fact that we resist electric moves means that when we make it to the Raichu, it's really not that bad. It just can't do much because we're bulky defensively in terms of special. We resist the moves and overall it's easy. I just want to take this fight to remind you guys, if you haven't seen the vanilla execute run, in this fight I got paralyzed and growled six times. It was like a seven minute in-game time battle where I had a single point of speed. One point of speed, it was awful. And this right here, more than any other battle pretty much in the entire game, this is the redemption arc for Executor. And we're, let's just move on because I don't want to remember that and have PTSD about it. From there, we can skip over Rock Tunnel and instead we can go straight into Celadon. And today, Executor is one of those Pokemon that really need to go ahead and buy at Celadon. So I head straight there immediately before I do anything else. Going here this early means we can't afford a whole lot of vitamins, but I can pick up three pretty comfortably. And for this run, since we have such low base speed, three Carbos are pretty much a must if you want to have a pretty good time. But the really important thing is that extra fresh water because that gives us access to Saffron City. And you know what that means, fellas. We get access to Psychic. Now, Psychic isn't the, the life-changing move that it was in the vanilla run because we do have Confusion, but it is a definite upgrade. And the reason why, if you're wondering why I rushed it on this run where I could have gotten a little bit more items, I could have got a little bit more vitamins as we see the run play out. The main reason is that I was missing one-shot ranges on a lot of Pokemon, even inside of the Rocket Hideout. So getting Psychic definitely speeds up the run overall. And I think sacrificing a couple of extra vitamins is well worth it at the end of the day. And now we can kind of just resume the standard route. Now in this run, I am picking up the PP ups. I did last time as well. So maybe I'm, I'm a changed man. I want my PP to be a little bigger. Who knows? But anyway, I pick up two and I'm going to use them on Psychic just because we're going to be relying, just like with Farfetch'd, we're going to be relying on Psychic very heavily and just having more uses will smooth out the run overall. And while the footage is playing, I would like to talk about something that's a pretty good time save that I think I probably mentioned in a video, but I'm going to go ahead and reiterate it. If you make that really early Celadon buy, that means you don't have to pick up high money items. And believe it or not, when you go through the Rocket Hideout, when you go through Pokemon Tower, when you go through the Safari Zone, it really can save you a pretty good bit of time. Now here for Executor in the background, you're noticing we're fighting a Rocket Grunt that pretty much every other run doesn't need to fight. And that's because I want to get the T for double edge headbutt is pretty good but when we get into some later fights the base damage of 70 is just not good enough and if you factor in the, the few free proteins you can get during the run and the 100 base power of double edge it really smooths things out and makes the run a little bit better overall so we are picking up that extra battle and I guess it's worth saying that I'm really not a fan of double edge I don't like recoil moves but when you look at the damage ranges there's no denying that it just makes the run a little bit better and as far as Giovanni goes we do have a grass move so pretty much two-thirds of his team are just null and obsolete and the Kangaskhan can survive a move but it just locks itself into rage and overall unless we saw a guard spec this is about the most standard Giovanni fight you can probably see from there we can skip over Pokemon Tower today we outspeed everything and we can pretty much one shot everything so that one guy who told me to never skip a rival battle I'm gonna get in trouble again oh no from there we can just continue down to the Safari Zone now I'm picking up the Carbos I'm picking up the protein and we pick up the final HMs of the run. Next up is Erica. I do go the path that battles the cool trainer that has the three weak to psychic middle stage Pokemon rather than take my chances with execute and we'll see more execute later. As far as Erica goes she's easy but she wasn't easy enough to do earlier than this. Holding off like I did here allows for some easy one shots and more importantly it lets me actually outspeed them to avoid any poison or some rap shenanigans or anything like that. Now let's take it down to Fuchsia and it's time to take on Koga. Now this is the part of the game where I'll actually need to start taking on some optional battles and when it's all said and done the extra stuff that we're going to do in the next couple of segments is ultimately what's going to lower our final time the most. You might be wondering why I just don't do it and guys Executor is very slow and if you're missing some levels later in the game that'll lead you to a result like we've seen in the first vanilla Executor run. There's a reason why I had like 30 resets brother
others. Now here there's a couple of tamers that are weak to psychic damage and they give some decent experience and even though Mega Drain is super effective on the sand slashes, it's just a very weak move. Mega Drain's so weak. Even at 120 effective power, it's still outclassed by a stab psychic and that's kind of sad, but it is what it is. Now before we move on to the next little grinding bit, let's talk about Koga. Now when you cross that level 35 threshold, most of his team is just a one shot. Red and blue Koga getting obliterated by Psychic isn't something new to the channel, but I do want you guys to peep this damage that the Weezing does to us. Thank God Sludge Bomb is not a thing in Generation 1 because even this regular Sludge blast us, but I am able to hang on. And the huge prize here for this battle is the Speed Badge Boost. It's much needed for our little slow egg tree. From there it's time for Silphco and there will be some more extra battles here today like I talked about earlier and we need it mainly for the speed. I did my best here to minimize the time and every trainer that we pick up is just around the standard path so we don't have to go too far out of the way because I really did want to get the best time and the most consistent run possible. The only thing that I would consider kind of out of the way is I did keep going past the rival number 5 warp and I made my way to the free hill because Papa needed some PP back. After that I used 3 rare candies to hit that level 43 damage rounding threshold and now is the time in the run where double edge kind of becomes a necessity. Headbutt is pretty decent but unfortunately the way things kind of plan out some opponents just linger around a little bit too long for my liking and with that out of the way we can just take a look at rifle number 5. Pidgeot is first, and honestly, you could probably get by this one without Sleep Powder, but I am playing a little cautious. It still has Sand Attack, and I'm trying to keep the resets to a minimum, so I let it take a little nap, and we progress on. And this next part for the entire run is going to be a little bit ironic. Out of every Pokemon that we're going to face, this little Execute is perhaps the one that causes us the most problems. It did in the first run as well, but here, I'm kind of just rolling the dice a little bit. I'm going straight Double Edge, and you can see that our little brother is kind of tanky and the worst case scenario happens. I get hit with poison powder and that just makes this fight significantly harder looking forward. Next we see Gyarados and at this level I can do extreme damage to it but I cannot one shot it. I take some extra poison damage and a dragon rage for my trouble and I recover just a little HP with Mega Drain before moving on to the Alakazam. And even though psychic damage isn't really a threat on this run, being poisoned and getting stalled out a little bit isn't fun and Double Edge gives us that nice one shot range here to see the end of the fight. And finally up is Charizard. Now unfortunately, even with all this planning, a speed tie is the best I could do. Now here, I actually win the speed tie, I miss a sleep powder, I get hit with an ember, and even though I can survive and I do hit sleep on the next turn, I can't withstand the poison damage and that's another reset. I do think that if I would have just went straight damage, I would have actually won, but every once in a while I do show my human side and I make blunders if you guys can believe that. Now the next time we can just skip ahead to the execute and things go how I want them to go this time. It misses poison powder and now the battle is much better than our previous attempt. Now we can just skip ahead to the end once again. Now I could have just went straight damage once again but since it's a speed tie I'm a little skittish. I go for a little bit of powder and that just ensures the victory when it hits and I take the fight. Now just like a lot of other runs it's unfortunate that we hit our very first blemish right here but I think when you watch a lot of these optimized runs you guys might forget how tough of a battle rival number five actually is and at the end of the day i'm not worried about one reset that came down to some bad luck now from here we can skip ahead over the next giovanni fight and since we are in the area i think the smart thing to do to save a little time is to hit up sabrina resisting psychic is obviously a huge benefit here but the crazy thing is that with our extra levels i actually outspeed almost everything in this fight with double edge and psychic for the Venomoth. This is a very quick battle and when it comes down to the Alakazam, even though we are outsped and it tries its best to just annoyingly stall out the fight, the end result is inevitable and we inch closer to the end of the game. Now it's time for my favorite part of the week. It's a very brisk swim down to our favorite island of the Kanto region and we're done doing extra activities for this run and that means it's straight to the age-old question of if Tombstoner, brother, is actually the 28th TM, and after we ponder one of life's greatest mysteries, we can take a look at Blaine.
And the elephant in the room is that I'm weak to fire, but guys, Blaine's AI just isn't great in Gen 1. It's even worse in Red and Blue. The great thing about level 45 is that the first two pre-evolved Pokemon are easy one-shots, and the Rapidash is as well, but it's a really fast little pony, and it really wants to use Fire Spin here. Here we get locked into a never-ending personal hell for a while, and our only escape is to wait for it to miss, but with the subpar accuracy of Fire Spin, that's exactly what happens, and eventually we can move on. And what's impressive about Executor is that it's an absolute tank. On the Arcanine, I'm at half health, I'm outsped, it goes for a fire blast, and I take one directly to the dome, but when the dust clears, we're still left standing. Now after Sleep Powder hits on the next turn, that kind of just seals the deal, and once again, we're moving on. Now our prize for winning this one and getting the 7th badge is the chance to fight Red and Blue Giovanni. Now you'd be hard pressed to find a Pokemon that's better equipped to absolutely dominate this fight and there's really never a question of how this one was going to go and we get the final badge and we can look ahead to those end game fights. Now from here let's directly go to rival number six with no theatrics let's just talk about it. Pidgeot is first and my favorite part about rival number six is that there's no more sand attack on Pidgeot's learn set. I still put it to sleep but this goes like we've seen in all the previous battles we can move on. Now in the fight there's a Rhyhorn on the team and we don't really need to talk about what's going to happen here we already know now it is good to recover some health if the Pidgeot part goes a little bit south so that's a positive at least now it's time for a repeat of the fifth arrival fight I don't want to chance sleep powder I want to go for double edge and I want to leave the luck up to the computer and once again it does hit the poison powder and I'm really not even mad at this point it is what it is now from here I sedate the Gyarados I use some mega drains to negate the health loss because I feel like that puts me in the best position going forward and now let's talk about Alakazam. Now this one, it's honestly, it's kind of hard to watch. The first turn is great. I tank a psychic, I do heavy damage with double edge, but I just miss that one shot range. Now from there, I'm thinking I'll just siphon a little bit of health with Mega Drain and finish it off, but it uses side beam, it confuses me, I hit myself, and then it starts to go for recover. Now at this point, my brain kind of just shut off. I'm using Turbo A on Mega Drain, and I wind up wasting multiple turns, and this one is one of the worst deaths I've probably had in a run in a long time and I'm man enough to admit that I just didn't play that well here. And you might be wondering why I didn't just do another run where I play better, and to that I say, you guys really need to understand that I don't have the luxury of doing this for a job. I can't just play Pokemon every single day and record videos every single day. There's a reason why I do one video a week. Anyway, I do get hit with poison on the next attempt once again, and honestly, I really struggle with the Gyarados here. I'm very stubborn, I really want it to go to sleep, and it starts to use Leer over and over, and honestly, that's not a bad thing. I do get some badge boost out of it. At the end of the day, those extra badge boosts do allow me to easily one-shot the Alakazam now. And with the couple of leers, I actually outspeed the Charizard. I put it to sleep, and I take the fight. Like I said earlier, this one is extremely similar to the fifth rival fight, how everything played out there. Now we're looking towards the league. Now in the original run, Executor was actually the lowest level Pokemon I've ever beat the game with up to that point. But the 29 resets tells us one thing. Thing. This run was not consistent. Today, not only are we trying to have a great run, but we're trying to cut out as many resets as possible. And just like with a ton of runs, Lorelai is next. And hey, look at this. We have a weakness to ice once again. I have eight rare candies left. I'm going to use seven of them. I'm saving one for the end of the game. And now I think it's time we start the Elite Four and we take a look at Lorelai. Even though she's super effective against me, I have great special, I can do a lot of damage back, and I even have a super effective Mega Drink to heal myself. Now you can see through the first few Pokemon that it's not an issue at all, I'm in zero danger, but let's talk about the Jinx. We've seen this a few times already, I just didn't play this run that great, I make a lot of mistakes. Now never mind that I get crit with an Ice Punch, there's nothing I can do about that, and there's also nothing I can do about Double Edge just barely missing the one shot. Now where I make the mistake is that I forget I keep forgetting about retroactive potions and instead of finishing off the fight I go for like a little cheeky mega drain just to get some health back and then Lorelai starts to heal. Now when it's all said and done this stalls a little bit and I do progress but I'm only at 21 health and this one looks pretty much over without a miracle. And guys, these egg move runs are just for fun and I make a huge mistake here. This is outside of the game. I made this executor custom ROM like I do for my other ROMs and I forgot I used the file that fixed things like ghost 
just being super effective to psychic types. Now what this means is instead of Lapras just spamming Blizzard endlessly, the AI thinks that Confuse Ray is now the play, whether it be the computer wanting a status on me or me just getting really lucky with the coin flip between Confuse Ray and Blizzard. Now obviously I think I would have likely lost this one and had another reset, but this isn't an official vanilla tier list run and I'm not gonna unfix the code because if I had to do that I'd have to redo the entire run so I'm not going to I'm gonna take this victory and if you have a problem with that just get over yourself now as far as Bruno goes executor has one of the best matchups in the entire game against him but that's not really saying much now what I am trying to get through to you guys is that it's an already easy fight and it's made much easier than normal and that means we can just quickly move along now we can take a look at Agatha and I'm outsped on the first Gengar now it just goes for nightshade and honestly guys that's all I needed for this fight the extra levels and Carbos guarantee that I outspeed the next few Pokemon up to the last Gengar and I can just use Psychic to make things very easy here now Agatha has the stigma of just being this very unlucky fight but honestly if you kind of manage your speed well and maybe you pick up a lucky turn against that first Gengar then the fight is often very free now I'd go as far to say that the last Gengar is complete rubbish its learn set is god awful and outside of toxic installing it rarely can beat competent Pokemon unless they already have a bunch of damage on them or something like that. At the end of the day, Agatha wasn't that bad. We don't have to linger here too long. Lance is up next, and for this fight, it's basically a neutral matchup in every sense of the word. The main question here is if you can survive enough turns and do enough damage. I guess that's basically every fight, but you know what I'm trying to say. The solution here, and something that I'm proud that I don't use a lot in this run, is Sleep Powder. I have to use it starting off against Gyarados, but I do take some heavy damage later in the fight, and I do have to go back to the Sleep Powder once again on the Dragonite, but the important thing overall is that I take this one on the first attempt, but it was kind of close. After that, I do have one candy left, so I use it, and I don't have a badge boosting move, so you might be wondering why I would do this, so let's just kind of dive into the champion fight, and we'll see how this one goes. Pidgeot is first, and I'm not going to entertain explaining this one anymore. This version of Pidgeot, more than any other, just gives it a lot of damage, so putting it to sleep is the best play, and that's all there really is to say about this one. Alakazam is next, and it does set up Reflect, and it starts to spam Recover. It's very annoying, and since Double Edge does recoil damage, I'm kind of just rolling my eyes, but eventually it does use some different moves, and I'm able to progress, but notice something key here that I wouldn't notice until later, and that's the fact that Psychic lowered my special. Now on the ride on, you would think that it'd just be Mega Drain and move on, but guys, we've seen this strat a couple of times, especially with slower Pokemon. I want some badge boost here. I use the resisted double edges. I want to bait out a Leer or a Tail Whip, and while it does work, the trade-off is that I don't get to recover as much health with Mega Drain as I normally would. As far as the Executor Mirror Match goes, it's much better than it was with Execute, but this one is an extreme slog. I I'm not in a ton of danger, and if I can hit some decent sleep powder luck, the only thing that I really waste here is time, and after a pretty long while, we can move on. On Gyarados, I kind of fall into a trap that I used to do a lot with Mega Drain. I want to get back some health, and I kind of just put on my blinders, and I'm just thinking about that, and I keep pressing my luck too many times, and I end up usually in a worse position than I would have if I just went straight damage. Now here, we see my ass get put to sleep by a Hyper Beam, and that's going to be the third reset of the run. So this one is rather lengthy. Instead, I think we're just going to do some cliff notes on the second attempt. Now the first key thing to note is that I don't take a special drop on the Alakazam and that's actually really key. Outside of that, I do fish for badge boost on the Rhydon once again and things are pretty much the same, but it does use Fury Attack a few times and it starts to get me kind of low. Now let's skip over the extremely long Executor Mirror and go back to Gyarados and this time I mix in some Psychics along with Mega Drain to recover some health. It does get a full restore and it does a little bit of damage back to me, but overall it's not worth focusing on. I'm actually in a pretty good position looking at the end of the fight. That leads us to Charizard and the boost here make us outspeed. That's what they were for. And the only question here is if the sleep connects and it does. That means that I have free reign to nuke it down and that's the fight and ultimately the run over. 
and that's it. Egg Move Executor has done it. Now, I will say that this run was actually really good, and it was definitely much better than the original run. There aren't enough words in the English language to let you guys know how bad it feels to do multiple runs with only Barrage for half of the game, and I honestly wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. When it's all said and done, Executor finishes with a level of 61, 3 resets, and a final end game time of 2 hours, 40 minutes, and 46 seconds. This one and the Farfetch run I did last week couldn't be more different, but it's honestly a pretty big coincidence how similar these runs ended up being. They were roughly a minute apart, they had the same resets, and I think if you were to put these egg move runs on the tier list, they would be ranked very similarly. Now, I had a lot of fun with this one. I think I'll likely do more Alolan runs, more Galarian runs, mainly Alolan Raichu, Alolan Executor in the future, but I would like to have some feedback on how you guys feel about all that. I feel like I do need to do some more Gen 9 runs just for the overall channel growth, but those do take a while to make, so be patient with that. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing for more solo run content and special thanks to my channel members. Now we got Tyler Willis, Deal, Meeves, JWJ, Mutus Dozen, D's Master, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Ferment, and Kendall C. Now I say it every week, but I do appreciate the support you guys provide, and I think that's about it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!